Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday, the weekly YouTube series where we talk about video game console repairs, mods, and restorations. And this week we have the Atari Lynx. Uh, so this was Atari's only handheld system. This came out right around the same time as the original Game Boy. And uh, it had a color backlit screen, which for the time was actually pretty damn impressive. And um, yeah, so as you guys can see, this system is working totally fine. And um, I just wanted to show it to you because you can get an idea of just how hard it is to see anything on this screen. Um, this is pretty typical. I mean, the screen is working just fine. They're just really, you know, it's old technology, so it just doesn't come out very clean and crisp. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to take this McWill LCD. This is the same guy who makes the um, Game Gear uh, screen, and we're going to take this. We're going to drop it in and replace it. And uh, we should have some pretty significant improvement in video quality. All right, well, let's get to it. All right, so disassembly of this system is actually pretty simple. Um, what you gotta do is start by taking these off, and um, normally it takes a little more effort than that, but I've been in here before, so I made it pretty simple to take them out. And uh, from here, you just gotta come in with a Phillips screwdriver and just take out these four screws. Okay, when you open up the battery compartment, there is a hidden screw. That's it. Okay. So now we've got the system here. Um, you can take the battery compartment out. Like that. And then you'll notice that there's a few plugs to disconnect. So this one is for the backlight. And we've got one here on the side for the speaker. And then this is for the control panel. And you can just kind of pull these little bales down. And then just pull. And it comes out. And then this is for the original screen right here. And this one can be kind of tricky. There we go. And you just kind of pull. And then this is the speaker. And that's it. So not very difficult to get the board free. All right, so the next step in the installation is going to be the removal of a bunch of components. So these are all related to the backlight, I believe. And so you've got two capacitors. You've got this coil here. Um, I'm sorry, this is the power module. This little guy here is the coil. And you've got two little transistors. So all six of those components have to come out. And uh, I'm going to just use the desoldering gun because that makes things way faster and easier. So, But there's more than one way to do this. You could also use solder braid as well. All right, so these last two transistors are proving to be kind of difficult. And so what I'm gonna do is just add some fresh solder to all of the points. And then I'm gonna come back with the desoldering gun and I'm going to let it kind of linger over each one so that there's a lot of heat applied. And then I'm gonna pull on the transistor on the other side with my thumb. And uh, that ends up getting them removed successfully. All right, so the next thing that we've got to do is prepare this screen. So the first step is to add some fresh solder to all of the uh, connection points. And then once that's all set, I'm going to prepare a whole bunch of wires and tin each one of those. And uh, and then I'm going to you know get some fresh solder on my iron and attach each one of those wires to all of the pads. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna wire in the backlight. And so to do that, we've gotta to go to this surface mount chip. And I added a little bit of flux. And uh, basically what we're gonna do is tin um, one wire. 
and then just bring it in and attach it to this leg of the backlight chip. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna be doing here is wiring in the power and ground for the screen. And we can pull that um, ground from the power module. So I just gotta connect the wire up there. And so um, the, the, the five volts is gonna come in from where one of the ceramic capacitors used to be. So you just uh, wire it in right there and that's it. All right, so now that those wires are all connected up on the board, we're gonna go ahead and attach them to the screen. So these are the three points for the plus five volts for the ground and for the backlight. And then all we need to do is just tin the other ends of those wires and bring them in. And um, if you remember from the last scene, I had red for my five volts. I had black for ground. I think it was like a brownish color if I remember correctly for backlight. And that's it. Okay, so we're getting close to finished here. And what I'm going to be doing now is attaching all of those wires um, from the screen over onto the main board. And uh, there's a wiring diagram that I can link to to show you exactly how to do this. Um, but basically the important thing to remember here is that when you tin your wires to connect to the links, you wanna make sure that the leads are short because if they're too long, they're gonna make connections to some of those other nearby pads and you don't want that. So you gotta be careful that the, that the wire, exposed wire is short and um, you can also come back with a multimeter and make sure that all of those different connections are separate from each other. Uh, it's also important too that you don't add too much heat because then you'll uh, melt some of that insulation and you might accidentally short out one of those wires with something that is nearby. But yeah, as long as you follow those instructions, um, this part isn't really that difficult. And, um, and then we're almost uh, ready to try this thing out. All right, so now we can start installing everything into the case. And thankfully, this isn't really that difficult because um, this thing is very well designed. Uh, so, you know, at this point now, you take the protective film off of the screen. You wanna make sure you don't touch anything. And uh, basically, the PCB is designed to go back into the original mounting posts where the screen used to be. So you just gotta line it up into position and then screw it down and um, Again, the, the, the wires that are provided with the mod kit are nice. They're not that long, they're pretty flexible, so you can just kind of negotiate them into position once uh, the screen is locked in. All right, so um, I wanted to just show you how I reattach everything, because this part can be rather tricky. So it helps to have the board flipped kind of upside down, and then if you just lift up the bales here, then you can connect the controller PCB back to the main board. And um, so there's like a little piece of paper that helps you get it lined up. You kind of just push down into position. And then with your other hand, yeah, or, or your fingernail, you can just kind of lock it down. And then the only other thing you have to worry about is just connecting the speaker. So the backlight connection is gone and the original screen connection is gone. So it's just the control panel and the speaker and that's it. All right, so everything now is fully assembled and uh, yeah, I wanted to give you guys a good look at this new screen and I mean, hopefully it's showing up well on the camera, but this screen is like a complete night and day difference. Everything is all really sharp, crisp, the colors pop and um, yeah, I mean, you really can't go wrong with this. And uh, so yeah, if you have an Atari Lynx that either has a broken screen or just has the original, I definitely recommend this mod. It, it it makes a considerable difference. And uh, I didn't install it, but there's even a VGA out so that if you want to consoleize this and connect it up to your television, you can do that as well. 
All right, well, that's it for this week. If you guys like this content, then you know what to do. Hit a thumbs up and uh, feel free to hit the subscribe uh, button. I'm going to have content like this out every Friday. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.